Hello, Père Hagen. Hello. Welcome to, welcome to La Rochelle. No, welcome to France. Welcome to La Rochelle. And welcome to our uh, RM 970. I believe you will soon have one of these uh, little beasts. Yes. Looking forward to having one. So ah, okay. uh, it's a good thing that it's building process all get ready gotten started. Okay, so we wanted to know a bit more about uh, yourself, so where you come from, what is your background? And uh, I, I'm born in Norway uh, and have sailed since I was a little kid. Uh, dinghies, sailboats uh, and sailboards, so, uh, and have been competing for quite a while uh, in the uh, Paralympic circuit. Uh, I've been to four Paralympics sailing for Norway and qualified us for five okay. together with some other people. So it's been been a big part of my life in, until uh, uh, the Rio Games, which was right. the last one I, I was uh, attending. Uh, I had to do something else for a while and didn't want to have the um, humongous uh, uh, traveling plans yes. then. Yes. Uh, but now I'm sort of uh, getting back to having a boat of myself for doing different sort of traveling. All right. Not on a racing circuit, but for having good days on the water. So it will be your first cruising boat? Uh, well, partly. Uh, I mean, I was, when I was, a, was 18 years old, my parents bought a small cruiser for, right. for me and my, right. my brothers and sisters. So we had a small cruising boat that we used, oh. used or could use for quite a long time. So I've actually been on on some cruise with with the small boat it was only 23 feet All right. but but we managed to go on a couple of weeks cruise actually me and a friend just after ending up in the wheelchair all right all right so obviously you are you are a racing and sailing specialist and enthusiast but would you consider yourself as a cruising specialist or do you have to learn more about the cruising world and the way you well, the first question is, what is the cruising world? Because I think it's a different thing to everyone. But, but for me, it's uh, part, uh, or for me, and what, what I want to obtain is the good days on water where you have a bit of fun, right? Uh, can feel some acceleration, feel, feel those things, but also have the security and, and safety of uh, going to a harbor whenever you want. Right, okay, okay. And so you, you, you have so many boats in the market, you have so many boats in your country, so why choosing iron boats? Well, uh, there is several, I would say, obvious reasons. Yes. I mean, one thing is, is getting a boat, it's easy yes, with a wheelchair. With a wheelchair. Okay. Uh, but but uh, a different thing is, is this very nice layout here, where if I just move up, I can actually control all of the winches myself. Yes. I, I can actually make this work so that I can sail this solo, or at least I hope I will be able to yes. do that. Yes. And that's, that's um, something that uh, I'm looking forward to, to trying. And I, I want to try some shorter ocean, cro ocean crossings right. on my own, okay. just, just to experience it. It's quite interesting because the boats were designed for not for solo sailing, but for family cruising, okay, yeah. fat family cruising. Uh, so obviously, we've been thinking about having all the hardware in this area yeah. just to make life easier. Yeah. So it's quite it's quite cool for us to see that somebody in a wheelchair uh, uh, found the boats interesting because that there's uh, we can see a lot of similarities between solo sailing and discipline sailing. You know. Yes, yes, uh, I, I think, uh, and, and, well, solo sailing or short and sailing or any sort of cruising, mum and dad type, is, uh, is, is, is shorthand sailing. Yeah. And meaning that uh, if you want to do that safe, you need to make it so that one person can handle all the winches with, and have it within reach yes. so that they easily can get the ropes out if it's yes. so needed or easily race the new sail mm, okay. uh, without uh, having to go forward on the deck or having to move around in the cockpit. Yes. Uh, and another thing that I find uh, really nice about these uh, uh, RMs is that uh, you are actually still producing boats with rather <laughs> tillers. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. Uh, this boat <laughs> has steering wheels and, and I can see that uh, on a sunny day, sitting up there is nice but, but on a wavy day it's a bit yes, tight yes, yes. Yeah, and, ex and, ex and ex uh, exposed <laughs> while, while sitting in here even having an open uh, transom, tra transom yes. is feels really really secure and, and 
uh, really shaded. No, no, you're right, you're right. So one more question. What, what would be your first, if you do remember, your first sailing souvenir? So you were really young, I guess. Yeah, I, I remember sailing the Opti as, as, a, as a kid. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, my first sailing experiences I don't remember because that, that was when I was about uh, six months older or so and right. were in, a, in the front of a dinghy All right. <laughs> in a bag. But uh, it's uh, clear that um, uh, I remember that when I was about uh, six or seven that I purchased my first Opti. Right. Uh, well, your parents. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was for my money. All right, okay. I had some savings from the birthdays and so All on, right, and they okay. thought I should have a small dinghy ah. at the summer house, and uh, so we got a small dinghy there, and uh, it was you. Well, was it was mine. Ah, okay, so, so so I had that for for many years, and uh, I remember breaking all the keels for a while in the <laughs> Opti. They 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 didn't take ground very well, <laughs> and it was it was a bit shallow where where I was sailing. All right. But uh, okay, we, we, we seem to fix and make a new keel every summer. Okay, oh, that's good. And last but not the least, what would be your own uh, feeling, your own definition about a beautiful boat? What is a beautiful boat in your mind? That's a big question. Huh? A beautiful boat is a boat that handles well. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, I mean, you can always look at the shape of boats, and there are so many, many beautiful shapes of boats. You have the uh, 11 meters to 12 meters, the old classical boats. Yes. Uh, they, they are just a sight for the eye. Yes. Uh, but, but, uh, and you have uh, uh, some modern cruises that have uh, lines that look sleek, like the RMs, yes. Yes. Uh, and looks like they've got uh, speed mm. and power, which makes them look powerful which of course is also something one like a boat to be uh, so there are s uh, but, but uh, when it comes down to it looking at the boat from a distance is how does it actually act yes. when it goes yes. up against the wind or down yes. Yes. with the wind how okay. does it behave does it uh, uh, yeah. flog backwards or forward oh. or does it stay stable on course just doing its job working. Yes. Okay, okay, good definition. So thanks a lot. So we will uh, talk to you later around your boat because yeah. your, your boat is being built at the yard, obviously. Uh, we saw this morning uh, the hull taking shape and I believe to tomorrow 100% of the hull will be almost uh, uh, finished from the wood side. So yes. we will have a, a new talk. A new, uh, new talk and a new yeah. look tomorrow, yes. yes. So thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you.